of course I'm mute. <laughs> now everybody should be able to hear me. Uh, welcome everybody to EIT Food Business Creation Get Involved, our webinar for impact-driven food and ag tech entrepreneurs, investors, corporates, and everybody who wants to understand and learn what we've done in the last years, what we're doing here at EIT Food Central Business Creation, and most of all, to understand a bit more about our programs and what we have to offer to make our food system more sustainable, healthy, and trusted. I'm Agnes, and uh, I'm in a very sunny city of Munich right now. So I'd really love to hear from you where you are right now. And um, also, if you're a startup, if you're a corporate, and why, why you're here um, today, and what, what's most interesting for you in this, in this event. Um, on behalf of my colleagues, Mira and Christoph, uh, and the whole EIT Food Business Creation team, I'm your host for today. And um, before I tell you a bit more about EIT Food, um, EIT Food Business Creation, and also um, and also um, about our programs. Um, I'm going to give you a slight um, little um, preview for our agenda for today. We have a fully packed agenda. We have our first, of course, um, the welcome and setting the scene by me. I'll tell you a bit more about EIT Food, who we are, what we do, and um, a bit more about our regional business creation activities. Wow, I see so many messages uh, popping up already. That's great. So let's keep this engagement running. Um, then afterwards, Christoph will share some more about um, our business creation programs um, and also about our new activities. Um, I think some of you haven't heard yet about our corporate venturing activities and about our access to finance tool, our EIT food impact investment um, activities. So Christoph will tell you a bit more about that. And afterwards, we'll jump in to a deep dive of the um, three different programs. So we'll have the Seedbed Incubator um, run by DIL um, for the region of Germany, Austria, and Netherlands, and also Switzerland. Um, here we'll have Alexander Merdian, who's the DIL Innovation Hub lead, and uh, also Pina Frank, who is co-founder of Holloyd um, from Vienna in Austria. And uh, she's an alumni of the 2021 cohort of the Seedbed Incubator. Also, um, we have then um, for our bit more advanced startups that are already established um, our EIT Fan Hub Insights um, with the Munich Hub. Munich Hub is being led by Unternehmertum and here we have Linda Schu who's um, joining us today to, to give you some further insights into what to expect when joining the EIT Fan Hub in Munich. Also, of course, you get a big overview about what to expect um, at the Fan Accelerator uh, overall. Um, Darina Sirakova from Ecoli for Sustainable Agriculture Startup, alumni from Munich Hub last year, will join Linda and give you her startup perspective on the program. Last but not least, we have our EIT Food Rising Food Stars manager, Najis Shakir, um, tuning in from the sunny city of Barcelona. And she will tell us a bit more about the EIT Food Rising Food Stars program and what it has to offer us for high tech scale ups in Europe. Unfortunately, um, Philip from um, the startup um, or scale up um, Levy, a Tom spin off um, in the personalized nutrition space, can't be here today. Um, they would have had a really exciting story to share about recently being acquired by Bionic, a leading health support platform um, with personalized science and database solutions. And um, they have a really interesting um, solution to offer. So maybe uh, Najis can give us a bit of an insight um, into, into um, them as well. And uh, then we have a quick wrap up, um, a networking session. So um, that's also something that I'd really like to encourage you. I see so many messages in the chat already um, to encourage you to just ask your questions and to take the time also to connect to other people after, after our stream. So at around 4.30, we'll close this session and you'll get time to jump into the networking tables. We have different tables prepared for you. So we have one table for the Seedbed Incubator. We have one table for EIT Fan. We have one table for Rising Food Stars. And then we have a couple of other tables in case you just want to connect to other agri-food entrepreneurs and um, actors in the, in the food tech and ag tech space. All right. So let's kick this off. Um, EIT Food um, is 
Europe's leading food innovation initiative. And we are working to make the food system more sustainable, healthy and trusted. And <clears throat> as you can see here, ERT Food is really about, um, about three different parts. So we have our industry partners, we have our research centers and universities, and we have our startups. So, of course, our food system is facing major challenges at the moment, um, now and in the future. So it starts from the degradation of soils going to what's a massive loss of food that's been lost along the whole food value chain, um, not only on a consumer level, but also during the whole production process. Um, there's topics such as the trust in our food system, the trust in the quality of our food. And of course, there's a need to increase, to increase the use of technology in the whole um, food value chain and in the food production, for example, for better predictions um, to a more sustainable use of our resources. And uh, at the same time, on a policy level, as most of you probably know, we have the European Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy that has a huge impact uh, onto um, the operating uh, models of our industry partners, of research centers and universities, and also on our startups. Um, so we need to build a more resilient and a resource efficient food system that includes also healthier diets um, for citizens and of course the restoration of, um, of biodiversity. So these changes and challenges are really relevant for all of our different partners. And um, EIT Food is, has the role of bringing all these players together and guide and accelerate um, the innovation process um, that is um, currently running in our food system. So um, as you can see, all of our partners and uh, research centers and startups are from different regions all over Europe. So um, ERT Food's headquarter is in Leuven in Belgium. And from there, we're organized in different hubs all over Europe, um, from Warsaw, Bilbao, Madrid, um, to here in Freising or Munich, um, where our CLC Central is located for the region of Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands. <clears throat> We have our six focus areas. So um, as I already mentioned, um, we have massive challenges in our food system. So um, ERT Food decided um, together with our partners to um, focus on six different focus areas um, that are of course aligned with the UN SDGs, that are aligned with the European Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy. Um, and these are the focus areas that are really important and will be in the future. Um, so that has a huge impact on your application, for example, to our programs as well. So if you apply to our programs, um, your solution should have an effect and an impact in one of these um, focus areas. Um, so it's alternative proteins, targeted nutrition, sustainable agriculture, sustainable aquaculture, digitalized traceability, and of course, a super important topic, the topic of circularity in our food systems, so the circular food systems. Um, our community in Germany, Austria, and the Netherlands um, I already gave a quick insight into, into our different um, partners that we have here. And um, just to give you a bit of an idea of um, the partners um, that you might be collaborating with when you join one of our programs um, and one of our activities, um, you can see them here. So it goes really from farm to fork. Um, we have John Deere with us. Um, we have Annex Food as a more in innovation hub. We have Siemens as a technology provider, DSM and Dur that are more in the, the food tech um, space, food ingredient space, Syntagon as being a major packaging company, or Cefetra Group, and recently just joined um, for our programs, Südzucker. Christoph will tell us a bit more about our corporate partners um, later on. Um, the research partners that we have here are Fraunhofer Institute, Technical University of Munich, University of Hohenheim, and the Bavarian State Ministry of Food, Agriculture and Forestry, and the DIL that we'll get to know later as well, the German Institute for Food Technology. Um, as startups, I have just a, just a small selection um, from our startups in our region. You'll get to know Ecolife and Holloid a bit more later. Um, also a super um, exciting startup uh, and Sunicorn um, that you might know from Germany uh, is AirUp. Also Löwy that I mentioned, um, unfortunately, who couldn't be here today. Um, delicious data, also from Munich, Menutech as well. Um, 
all of these teams are really shaping um, the future of our food system together with us in our region and our amazing alumni of our programs. So before I get um, deeper into, or Christoph will tell you a bit more about our business creation programs, and um, this is, I think, probably the reason why you're here today, um, I would like to take the chance and, and give you a bit of an insight into what we do um, next to the business creation programs um, when it comes to business creation on a, on a CLC central level. So for the region Germany, Austria and the Netherlands, we um, thought it's super, super important to have um, programs on the one side that are running every year. And then at the same time, we see that it's important to create an impact also on a more regional level and to connect um, teams, to connect to the, to the regional ecosystems, may it be in Bavaria, may it be in the whole of Germany, um, because we think um, that there are so many dots we have to connect. So um, this is the, 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 um, yeah, the extra toppings um, that we created for you. Um, so we have four different formats um, on the regional level. First of all, um, for you as startups, probably super relevant, um, the regulars table. The regulars table is an exchange window via Zoom um, that's taking place um, once a month. It just, um, it's just basically a Zoom call where around 20 to 30 founders meet up and we, we moderate the whole thing. Um, there's always one team that is sharing, is sharing his or her current um, challenges. Also, I'm um, given insight into, for example, the last funding round, how they did it and uh, how they connect within the ecosystem. And then it's an open round to exchange, connect with us, with other networks uh, in the food and ag tech space in Germany. So uh, we had Food Hub NRV joining us. We had uh, Kitchen Town Berlin. We had Impact Hub Berlin. And, and there's many more to come. On the second level, we think it's crucial um, to, to give um, small and medium-sized companies that are willing to collaborate um, with startups, with our amazing startups in the food and ag tech space um, to, um, to further advance the, advance the innovation processes, um, a bit of a, um, guidance through the whole process. So this is how um, the format Collaborate Now uh, actually came into place and it's about collaborating uh, and it's um, with the startups and uh, corporates, startups and medium-sized companies because we see um, that there was a strong need for relevant and um, very guided networking workshops and mentoring. So um, startups and medium-sized companies learn how to work together and what options there are to actually collaborate with each other. And it doesn't always have to be an investment, it can also be a pilot project and so on. Um, this program will take place again also in um, July in 2022, so stay tuned via our newsletter that we're sharing um, in the chat later. And um, yeah, if you're interested in that, just um, get in touch and we'll tell you more about that. Um, the third format is the financial literacy topic um, we have um, just launched this year. Um, one week ago, we launched our Agri-Food Finance Fridays. Agri-Food Finance Friday, Fridays is about giving you insights and context in um, the finance space to help you identify the right source of finance and to, to um, support you in um, making wise choices when it comes to financing um, your food and ag tech innovation. Um, the first session was on the topic of um, public funding. So um, let's see where the next one will lead us. If you have some ideas and if you if there's one uh, topic that you'd really like to talk about when it comes to financing, just get in touch and we're happy to support you in that and to set up the, the fitting program. Um, the last one is the partner support. We have individual um, challenges. Um, our first pilot that we did now together with Siemens and um, the State Agriculture um, Research Institute, um, the LFL here in Bavaria, um, was a ag tech challenge that we set up especially for one location in Rustov in the lower Bavaria. And um, we managed to bring three startups there. The session will start in the end of February. And it's all about giving startups um, the possibility to a soft landing session that's really tailored to their needs to get able to test their solutions on the fields that are provided and also to further advance their solutions with technology experts and other mentors in the ag tech space. And at the same time, to bring some sparks of innovation into a very um, specific area of Bavaria. 
So um, yeah, if you have, if you want to know more about about these programs, just get in touch um, later at the networking session. And now, Christoph, I see that you already turned on your video, so you know it's uh, it's your time to shine. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the programs. Thanks so much, Agnes, for the intro, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to walk you through uh, what we have, um, yeah, on a pan-European level as an offer for you. And uh, actually, one of the questions we receive quite frequently is actually, yeah, what what might be the right uh, program for me, right? So this is one of the questions that we want to ask, uh, what we want to answer today. Not only what is the right program for me, but also what how can I actually benefit from it? And uh, maybe you are an investor or a SME or corporate. How can I further support, right? What's already there and what's already in place. So these are the questions we want to answer today in this webinar. And the way the pro startup programs at ERT Food work is pretty much straightforward. So we look at three distinct challenges that you might have as an entrepreneur in your, in your journey. And starting very early on with the need of getting some feedback on what you are trying to develop, um, that there is actually a need for it in the market. So market validation, this is the first big hurdle, the big challenge that we see um, startups are facing quite every startup faces in the very beginning. This is why we uh, offer in the Seedbed Incubator tailored support for the early ones. For the more advanced startups that have potentially already registered the company and are then looking outside for customers so not only validation anymore but also maybe pilots um, co-development strategic investments so it's really important then to get in touch with the whole industry with potential customers for them we work together in the accelerator on how we can do a better job linking them with the industry and finally and this might be the last challenge. If you have already some product market fit in your home market, how to go internationally, right? So how to expand throughout Europe, how to scale up your technology and how to potentially conquer the world. Yeah. So that's one of the one of the maybe final steps in your journey from a from an early innovator to an impactful um, change maker in our food system. So this is how our programs are organized. And what we've seen throughout all three of them is actually that there is a need for strong financial support, obviously. Yeah? So what you see in the next slide is that we have started as ERT Food um, not only to invest, but also to link um, startups to our um, to our industry network, right? So it's important to get customers. Yeah, um, That's even more important than times than financing, yeah? investments, to get early access, um, with the industry to get the feedback, but also to see whether there is mutual ground for future collaboration. And at DET Food, we saw that there's also a big interest from the from the industry to get a better connection to the startups, a better visibility of the startups that uh, that are actually applying to our programs. This is why we are at DET Food now brokering those connections, um, yeah, in a more structured way. Um, we have been piloting it last year already within the accelerator. And we are very happy and fortunate that we can now actually roll it out across all of our programs and all of our startups that apply to one of the three IT food programs will actually have the opportunity to get some exposure towards the corporates as well, if they're interested in. And then let's see that depending on their interest, um, follow up meetings um, will be arranged or we can also help with the, with the matchmaking process afterwards. And besides brokering connections between you and the industry, we are obviously and also able to support you financially. Um, so ERT Food has started since 2020 to also actively invest in companies. Um, we can invest up to 300,000 euros. Um, we have piloted this 2020 um, during the COVID pandemic. Um, we set up a so-called COVID rescue initiative and we are able to yeah, support, I think, 13 companies in 2020. And last year it was around six. Um, three of them were actually ERT fan startups, so from the accelerator, and also some from the Rising Food Stars and from the from the from the Seedbed Incubator too. So it's across the board, and uh, the schemes depend obviously on your on your needs as well. So it can be that ERT Food can participate directly in your investment round. We can um, participate with a safe note, 
Yeah, so it's a very, very easy tool for 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 to to yeah to avoid uh, lengthy evaluation processes, or we can also have convertible node structures, really depending on the on the state you're in and and your needs, obviously. In addition, we also collaborate with Peakbridge Partners. Um, they have now raised a separate early stage fund, uh, which is called the Food Spill Sparks Fund. And uh, they have raised, meanwhile, another 10 million euros that they are looking to invest in companies. And uh, we also um, are obviously approached quite frequently from investors all over Europe, which we are happy to connect you as well. So there is a lot of support that we can give you from the investor side. But also part of our programs is the access to equity free grants as well, which might help you in your early stages, for instance, in the accelerator to do some product development, to do some travel, which will hopefully this year become possible again um, in the in the earlier stages to do custom interviews, you need some financial support as well. Yeah, so these are more like the to cover the immediate needs. But we are very well aware that if you have, um, yeah, companies or ideas where which are more capital intensive, then you you won't make it with 10k. Yeah, so this is why we have started now to establish also these other funding instruments. And what's unique to the EIT Food Impact Fund? So this is really you, it's only accessible if you're part of our programs or if you're part of our alumni community. So um, that's the only way to get access to this one. But the other ones, um, yeah, we are obviously keen to make introductions here to the companies um, applying but also participating in our programs too. Um, over to you, Agnes. All right. Thanks so much, Christoph. Um, I was just looking if there's any questions um, to you right now in the chat since we are perfectly in time. Um, but I don't see any questions right now. Uh, if you do have questions, please post them in the chat. You now have the time to, uh, yeah, to have Christoph right here in front of you. Five minutes um, of a fireside chat, um, if you like. Um, if there's no questions um, on the whole topic of um, uh, corporate investing, um, corporate venturing and also investing, um, then I would suggest we just go on and um, take the, the deep dive into our programs. There's a question that I see now, maybe one, Christoph, um, if we have applied to the EIT Accelerator, can we reach out for introductions to investors? So it's obviously, um, it's obviously part of a more structured process and very much moderated in each of our accelerator hubs. So there are different formats in different hubs. For instance, um, we had in, organized in Bilbao an own investment forum, right? To give you then not only not only to buy and not only to do an email introduction, but to give you also the forum in front of investors to pitch, to network, and to have some training beforehand because it can really help to get the knowledge too <laughs> around cap tables, about what to present, uh, what are the, the the really the decision uh, the relevant decision factors on the side of investors yeah what are they actually looking for uh, so to have some training but also um, to have this unique exposure in a very um, yeah in a very exclusive um, kind of environment that's what we that's what we're looking for as part of the programs but if you have yeah obviously if you receive um, if you receive introduction requests up front we are dealing with them on a one-by-one -one basis yeah so um obviously we cannot cannot do it for everyone yeah but we focus on those who are part of our programs but if there are uh, requests coming our ways we usually deal with it more on a regional level right so as, um, as agnes mentioned we have formats on a regional level such as the finance webinars we also know uh, investors on a regional level so we will make those connections primarily on a regional level but if there are um, requests coming in for introductions to the big vcs uh, that are active across europe we can we can handle those as well but not that frequently obviously yeah, to not overload them perfect thank you christoph i hope that answered um, your question renata there's a question here as a oh I didn't know uh, how did that <laughs> come up here as a scale up firm how can we cooperate 
Christoph. Sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> How can we cooperate? I just got a got a message. I think um, in my in my chat. So um, the question was by um, Vizan. She's a, she's from a scale up firm, and she wants to ask how she can cooperate or her firm can cooperate um, with EIG Food as a consulting firm. Yeah. So the easiest the easiest is um yeah to be clear on which which stage you're looking to support right so is it more in the early stages where it's really more about mentoring in my opinion and more about being open-minded and making introductions to industry that's how the big value add in my opinion can be in the very early stages and um, later on it's for sure mentoring too but it's also maybe delivering workshops depending on your expertise. For instance, if you have special expertise in scaling up, um, that are topics we are looking for um, yeah, primarily in the accelerator and later on in the, in the, in the Rise of Foodstuffs too. So it expands then from mentoring um, to making introductions to maybe giving a workshop, giving a lecture, giving an input session or participating in other formats that we have um, at the, at the later stages, so it would be good to get in touch with the, um, yeah, with the program, um, the program leads or the the people that are close by you in the region. Because as Agnes presented earlier, there are even more formats that we also run in a certain region, right? So, although there might be not immediately an opportunity on a pan-European level, there will be potentially something coming your way on a more regional level. Thanks, Christoph. Um, I hope that answered your question, Besan. Um, there will be time to discuss uh, in a networking session later as well. So uh, maybe you can grab Christoph there and um, ask him a bit more in detail about um, what that collaboration could look like. Um, Rui has a question. Um, if he can be involved in more than one program at the same time. So um, Christoph, I would leave this one um, for you just because yeah. um, I'm moderating and I hope I don't have to answer all the questions. So, um... <laughs> fair enough. Um, fair enough. Just one comment on this one. So when it comes to the pan-European programs, we feel that each is obviously targeted a very specific need, right? The need for market validation, that seedbed. The need to connect to industry, to run pilots, to pilot the technology on site or in a lab environment, that's that's ERT fan, that's the accelerator. And scaling up, that's the unique challenge uh, at a, at during the, um, when you come, join, come and join the uh, rising food stars network right so i feel that there is no overlaps right so either you are <laughs> your your primary challenge is this one or another one but there might be programs also offered on a regional level and they are they are obviously not exclusive right so you can be part of the accelerator but at the same time also be part of the finance webinars for instance in clc central of the ag tech challenge that we run and there you have even more opportunity right to work with the ET food and to get access to the network thanks christoph um yeah i was just going to add on that as well um now at the ag tech challenge sustainable agriculture um we do have uh, for example two teams that took part in our programs and rising food stars and another team that's a seedbed alumni and they now participated in a challenge as well so really the big goal is to to have alumni involved into in in other regional activities as well um, but then yeah as you said um, the three different programs are, are pretty um, different from each other so um, there's there's not really an overlap there and there are some there are some questions still in the chat i still would like to continue because i feel like they might be answered um, anyways as we continue um, if not um, sina and an um, we can we can discuss that later and um, we would now get further into the deep dive of our programs <clears throat> which i would like to start um, with the seedbed incubator christoph already explained to you uh, what the seedbed incubator actually is all about so it's about giving entrepreneurs the tools to establish whether there is a market need for their innovation um, within the agri-food space and what that potential might be um, here, a quick overview about um, where the different location of um, the seedbed incubators are, because as our um, 
central hubs, our um, co-location hubs. Uh, I told you earlier, we're located in Leuven, but then at the same time in different European regions. Um, it's the same for our programs actually as well. So um, the Seedbed Incubator is in Aarhus um, for the Northern region. Um, we have one in Belfast, the UK. We have one in Bilbao for Southern Europe. And we have one in Warsaw in Poland, and we have one in Quakenbrück, which is um, in uh, Germany, in the north of Germany. And um, that's where also our partner, um, the Dill Hub, is um, located. And you'll hear from him in a second a bit more about um, their involvement in the program. Um, Seedbed Incubator is a pre-accelerator program. So it's for scientific entrepreneurs that want to explore the potential um, of their research. So if you have a research, if you have an IP and you want to um, understand and explore if there is a commercial potential, this program is really for you. Um, it's facilitated, as I said, um, by our partner organizations in five different hubs, maybe um, a university, maybe um, a research institute, um, maybe um, the University of Belfast, for example. And um, for our region of Germany, um, the Dill Seedbed Hub is in um, Quakenbrück, as I already said. Um, you can expect uh, six months of um, transforming your science and research and technology-based innovation um, and to really um, yeah, de-risk that early stage of innovation. So that's basically the goal of the whole program. You get access um, to, to expert training of mentoring uh, to identify your core business assumptions. Um, you get access to mentors that are really there to guide you through um, the whole process of doing your customer discovery research. And um, you can validate um, this roadmap that you have established um, with more than 100 different stakeholders out of the food and um, ag tech ecosystems. Um, that can be stakeholders, um, that can be customers, that can be users. And um, what we really want you to, to do and um, what we want you to do with the 6K financial support is to get out of the lab to get out of an incubation space, to go to, uh, to fairs, to go um, form focus groups, to go out there and speak to your customers. And um, this is really the challenge that, that you have here and that, that um, really helps you to understand if there is a market need or if you might have to pivot your solution that you originally wanted to bring onto the market. Um, after the program, you get, um, as Chris, Christoph already uh, explained to you, access to um, potentially access to um, to um, investments. So what we what we try to provide here is really investment readiness support. So training on how to pitch in front of investors and what to take care of in the whole process of um, being engaged with investors. And um, potentially, of course, um, you get um, the option to, um, to profit from that DIT Food Impact Fund and our investor network as well. Um, the goal is really um, to solve global food system challenges and to transfer this amazing potential of scientific research that is there and to form it into market validated businesses um, with the support of our partners. So now you probably ask yourself if you're eligible to apply. Um, so the target group here are aspiring entrepreneurs, meaning um, teams that are looking to validate the market potential of their innovation that want to launch a new company. Um, the, the sweet spot here are really entrepreneurial academics. So um, teams that are doing research that um, have an IP that's belonging to their research organizations um, or to themselves and that really want to commercialize um, that and newly formed companies. So you can still also apply if you're spin out of university and you already started your business, but you still want to go through the whole process of um, the customer discovery research and, um, and understanding um, the potential of your, um, of your solution. If you uh, ask yourself if you're eligible to apply, um, you are if you're ready to transform your science into technology-based innovation. Um, you can apply if you have an existing prototype or a lab proof um, concept that is established. Um, you have to fit into one of the EIT food focus areas, so just have an impact into uh, our, our food system that's really relevant. Um, you have to be at least two team members. Um, so one team member also has to be an EU citizen. Uh, or if you're not two team members, then um, you can join as a solo researcher 
um, with your RTO, so with your university, um, who has to be involved in the program as well. Um, and if you're already registered, um, you have to be an EU registered company, of course. Um, we will have some webinars in the next weeks also um, that will help you to understand um, whether um, yeah, how to write a good uh, application. So um, we'll have a lot of time also to ask these questions um, during um, the, these very uh, detailed questions about if your individual case is eligible to apply um, during the other web webinars. And I think um, I can't see if there's questions in the chat right now, but uh, there might be. So I think um, you'll have some time to answer them um, within the month of February. Just about the key timings. Um, the application phase is now until end of February 28th. Um, then we have the evaluation phase until end of April. And then <clears throat> the top 60 teams um, that applied from all over Europe um, will join a one week bootcamp. During this bootcamp, um, you will get all the tools that you need um, to develop your value proposition, to set up your customer discovery journey and to get these business insights that you as a more, let's say, um, technology focused um, researcher uh, are not so firm with. And um, after this one week, um, there'll be a pitch in front of um, some of our partners about uh, experts in the entrepreneurship field and our mentors. And then there'll be the top 40 teams selected. And um, they will be brought to the different hubs and uh, you will join your individual hub and your individual hub journey um, for the market discovery. By the end of the program, there'll be options roundabout, there'll be um, uh, pitch sessions in front of investors, in front of experts again. And of course, um, as I already mentioned, we'll have um, alumni support and um, that we provide you with. So in case there's, there's different um, challenges that you need to tackle, we will support you in, um, in finding solutions to these um, challenges that you have. Some of our alumni in 2021 from Seedbed Incubator in Dill. Um, we have Holloid um, that we'll get to know now, Paltech, an ag tech company in the weeding um, area, Canoela, um, no redefined ingredients, uh, no refined ingredients, uh, super interesting solution as well. We have Seed Alive, um, Sereno, who are more in the digitalized traceability field, um, or Soul Bites um, from Switzerland. So we have really different um, solutions that joined us last year. And um, now it's, um, I'll skip this one. Uh, now it's time um, to hear from your individual experiences um, what um, teams will expect when they apply for this year's still Seedbed Hub. And um, yeah, also to learn a bit more about um, the Seedbed Incubator program and how you run it at um, Dill Innovation Hub. So we have two representatives from the Seedbed Incubator last year. Um, we have Alexander Merdian, who's the hub lead um, for the Dill Innovation Hub um, in Quakenbrück, who's the program facilitator for the, for the region of Germany, Austria, and Netherlands. And we have Pina, Pina Frank, who's the co-founder of Holloid. Um, they are a digital traceability startup from Vienna and Austria, and they offer an inline data monitoring solution for food production. Um, that provides insights on tiny particles and their solution improves food safety, reduces food waste and um, the rest I think she will explain um, you because I think it's super interesting to hear from you um, what you actually do. So Alexander and Pina, great to have you here. I stop sharing my slides. And um, yeah, let's start. Um, Alexander, please tell us a bit more about Dill Innovation Hub and what your role in the Seedbed Incubator is. Yeah, hi, Agnes. Uh, thank, thank you for having me here. Yeah, uh, the uh, Dill Innovation Hub is the first point of contact for startups uh, who want to get into touch with uh, the German Institute of Food Technologies. This is uh, the abbreviation Dill in German. What we do, we promote support startups in the agri-food industry through advice, training, networking, customized program. One of it is uh, EIT Food Seedbed. Uh, maybe allow me two sentences about the German Institute of Food Technologies. Uh, it's a non-profit institute, one of the leading institutes in Europe. We, what we do is very uh, applied research as well as we work for the industry in our different departments. We have around 200 people working here. 
and our apartments is uh, advanced technologies, product innovation, biotech, food physics, automatizations, and machine building and analytics. Yeah, my role is um, I'm I'm heading the uh, the innovation hub, and I'm responsible here at the institute for the uh, EIT food seedbed program. Perfect. Thanks, Alexander, for that introduction. Um, now the same one for you, Pina. Um, tell us a bit more about Holoid and, and what you do um, to solve our food systems challenges and also what challenges you're actually solving. Thank you, Agnes, for the invitation. Um, Holoid, we always say we provide big data on small things. We are offering an online process monitoring system and you can use it for food industry, of course, and it's based on holographic microscopy. So it means we are digitizing the microscopy images and automating the analysis using artificial intelligence. We are um, monitoring any particles which are bigger than 300 nanometers in liquids. And we are focusing in bioprocess and bioreactors. And for example, cellular agriculture is very important for us and fermentation processes happening in these huge vessels where you usually don't see anything. And this is our um, effort to, uh, this is our um, part we are playing in solving this food problems. Well, it sounds, it sounds really um, techy. <laughs> and at the same time, uh, super important, I think, the topic of yeah, food quality control is one that will um, become more and more um, important um, and, and is right now and a big challenge um, that's there to, to solve. Um, so getting a bit deeper into the program, I already talked about, um, about market validation, about customer discovery. So um, Pina, maybe you can explain a bit more about um, why you decided to apply for the Seedbed Incubator um, and why did you join this, this journey and how it was for you? I mean, we were the textbook applicant I would say because we are the university spin-off coming from academia, I personally have some product development and application development experience already, but I don't have any formal business development training. And in our team, we are three physicists and a business person. Um, and in general, we know anything about the sensors and building microscopes, but we have no idea about the industry and about building a product, a real product for the industry. So we wanted to start in the food industry. That was our first um, industry. And we wanted to learn more about food, about the regulations, about the customers and their real needs. And that's why actually we joined the incubator last year. Well, that sounds really like you were the, the perfect um, yes. set um, for the program. And um, maybe also, um, Tell us a bit more about um, what happened then. And you joined the program. So how was the whole the whole process for we you? Did you have joined, some results also during the time? I have to admit, I joined the team in May and I was very happy to start the program in June. So it was one of the first things I did. And I, as I told you, I have no idea about business development and about no knowledge, no mindset to build up a startup. So it was very new for me. And we had to break free from this technology focus and develop something for the customer and not waste time with something really cool, which you, of course, want to develop, but which nobody needs. So um, it was very helpful. We had this workshop um, in, the, uh, in the beginning where we had this, um, the first phase with this one week bootcamp. And we finished it with a clear roadmap, with a clear business model, with defined market segments. And we really had a plan in the end for the next six months. And we committed to have 100 plus meaningful conversations with the customers, with the development partners. And the best thing is this program kept us accountable. So we had these bi-weekly meetings with Alexander. Thank you, Alexander. <laughs> And we were reflecting about what was happening. Are we doing something? Are we doing the right thing? And are we? And you have to push yourself to pick up the. I mean, it's not the phone anymore. Just write this email, just contact these people, and ask them, and have these meetings. And hundred plus conversations are intimidating 
in the beginning, but it is doable and it is extremely beneficial. We had to pivot. We had some assumptions in our minds when we started. And at the end, we just gave some of them up. And of course, you have to accept the reality and how it is. And uh, we learned a lot. So that was our experience. It was very humbling and very, I would say, we had a, a many, a many lessons. We learned a lot. That sounds that sounds really um, really great. Um, also, I think the topic of pushing yourself and having someone to maybe also push you a little bit can be something that I think is super important important in this in this journey. Um, maybe also to hear from you, Alexander. Um, do you have some learnings from 2021? Did you have some some teams that stuck in in, in your head um, where you think, well, they they really stood out? Um, is there anything from from last year you'd like to share with um, with the people who are watching? I think at the first place, the learnings are on the side of the participants. I mean, uh, basically. Best outcome, like uh, uh, Pina just explained, is let's say a good idea about what you're going to do. You can call it validated business model if you like. Yeah? And what we constantly learn in the programs is that, that uh, assumptions are maybe not right and they have to be pivoted. This is, uh, let's say, one big advantage of the program. Uh, and the next one is here, you're becoming part of a community. We have the so-called entrepreneur in residence from different fields. So it's uh, ag and food tech specialists, it's financing specialists, um, it's business development specialists. And you can simply ask them in a very relaxed and constructive atmosphere. You can learn from others as well. Yeah? What are they doing? How do they approach? And uh, I would say when it comes to our participants, last year was extremely successful. Uh, and as it is in the startup scene, it's 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 very dynamic. Uh, and last year, our eight participants raised investments of around I don't know, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand already. Yeah, some still need a bit more time, but uh, all of them are still on board, proceeding. We're very good to see. And what we really like to see here at the German Institute of Food Technologies is a is a long term connection to them with EIT Food. Uh, with, with our institute and of course when it comes to technical expertise this is not really the scope of the program because it's more about business validation but i'm i'm always happy to connect them to our departments uh, if i find an expert to di discuss let's say more or less technical assumption what works what might not work what are our experiences so altogether i think pina you can agree a uh, great, great thing working in the teams Hopefully, we will have the possibility to to meet face to face this year. Uh, last year, we, we managed it uh, in uh, on the on the venture summit, big event. Everyone was totally thrilled. Uh, Pina, you agree? It was really nice, and it it, it really adds a, it, an additional element to 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 see the partner teams and uh, and the people from EI2 in person. So yeah, I think everyone who's unclear. Contact us, we can discuss. And uh, I always say to apply does not hurt. Yeah. So, uh, and I think it's uh, from what we've learned in the previous years, it's it's very helpful for early stage startups. Um, thanks, Alexander. I think it was a really good wrap up, actually, of um, of what teams will expect. Um, yeah, I can totally agree that um, we'd all love to to do uh, the programs also live this year. Let's just um, just see where, where it's going. I think at the same time, of course, the possibility uh, to join online um, gives teams that are maybe in different European regions also the chance to, to join more easily. Um, it's quite a way from Vienna to Quakenbrück, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> So um, at the same time, I think um, the, the virtual world um, really provides us with, with some opportunities as well. But um, of course, I'd love to have this, um, this event also in live very soon again. So um, Pina, um, is there anything else you'd like to, to, to share with other entrepreneurs, with other startups that um, think about um, applying or that are maybe not sure if they should apply? They should. 
I can just say they should apply. If they are uh, considering applying, they should. And if they are coming from academia, it's really perfect fit because the workshops, as Alex uh, reminded me of them, I mean, it's really very, very beneficial. I learned a lot. It was like an MBA, but in a very short time and really focused on this startup building and on my product and on our technology. And with the real feedback with this, professionals giving us uh, these workshops, these one-on-one -on -one meetings and experts on residence, everything, the whole and the connections you can have. I mean, I sound now like a poster child, but um, it's really, you should apply if you are considering. From academia, I would say yes, definitely. And if not, if you have just a product idea, which is food related and you want to have this reality check, this market validation, it's very, very useful. Great. Thanks so much, Pina. Um, I promised to everyone I didn't uh, brief her on, on saying that. Um, <laughs> so um, it's it's really great to hear again um, from you that, that you can really profit from, from the program. And um, I'd really encourage everyone who's thinking about, okay, should I apply, shouldn't I apply? Uh, you can apply, you can apply the, um, you can take part in the, in the boot camp in the beginning and then um, see where it takes you. And um, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a great opportunity also. And it's, um, and it's for free as well, right? So um, it's nothing you can lose, only, only things you can win. So thanks, uh, Alexander and Tina. I'll just um, start um, sharing my slides again, which will take a couple of seconds. By the way, it's great to see that there's 60 people in the session. Um, it's um, really not taken for granted since um, it's such a sunny day out. And I think it's really, really cool that um, you're all still here. And um, now it's about... Um, the deep dive into the EIT Food Accelerator Network. And here again, we have Christoph um, joining us uh, since he is the EIT Fan Hub um, for Europe. And then also we have the deep dive by um, our Munich Hub lead um, from Unternehmertum, Linda, and uh, an alumni um, who is Darina from Ecolife, an EgTech startup. And she will tell us a bit more about her solution experiences as well. So Christoph. Thanks so much, Agnes. Um, yeah, before I hand over to Linda and to Darina, maybe a quick overview. So EIT Fan is, has meanwhile grown to a seven hub accelerator program. So we operate seven accelerator locations that are not, not only in Munich, but then also in Bilbao, Spain, in, in the UK, in Cambridge, um, in Helsinki, in, in Lausanne, in Haifa, Israel. So really spread across Europe. And in each of those hub, hubs, we provide a very tailored program. And you will learn more about it in a second from Linda. But at the same time, we want to create this unifying element, right? And the unifying element is that we are all working towards um, yeah, connecting all the startups in our programs to the investor community, but also to the network itself. That means uh, to our corporate partners, but also to research partners to help you take the next step, which is in our case, then not market validation anymore, but concrete, um, yeah, getting pilot projects, getting in best case uh, contracts, uh, agreements between find your customers, find your customer base. So it's the next step. And um, this is why on a pan-European level, we are connecting you um, through a standardized matchmaking format um, with the industry and also offer now, um, hopefully this year, on-site events um, spread across Europe where we can meet up together um, if you're working on similar challenges. For instance, um, yeah, we had last year, we had some focus topics such as um, sustainability in agriculture or healthy nutrition and alternative proteins, where we offered dedicated courses along, along the, you know, the program itself. Um, so each week we met up, but this year I feel we can um, hopefully travel again, <laughs> which is obviously great to bring everybody working on similar problems together on one side and um, yeah, 
giving a platform for mutual exchange and to exchange ideas and feedback and to hear a bit more how others are approaching different challenges. So this is something that we uh, where we can add value across our different accelerator hubs. And there are some, some benefits that are also very much the same across all of our hubs. So in each of our locations, we give um, a 10K grant to all the participants. Um, and this is for two, two reasons. Yeah? One is um, to support travel if needed. Yeah? So if they are pan-European events like the Venture Summit last year, like uh, these, these on-site events in other locations, we have some money to support, support the travel needed. But at the same time, we are also aware that there are special services you may need or access to infrastructure that you might not get elsewhere. So part of this money should also go towards product development. And we have a lot of uh, partners in our network that can offer facilities. And we would we encourage you also very much to make use of those services and uh, to use part of the money, obviously, to, to, to also advance in your product development. So that's one aspect. And then in each of our hubs, we have obviously um, also local ecosystem partners. So it's very interesting. Um, it's very interesting to look across Europe, yeah, because networks and ecosystems are very different. And I feel we have a very strong one here in Munich. But at the same time, we have also partners that are active across Europe and interested in all of our locations. This is why our main my, our main goal, our main objective from a central perspective is to link you to those partners, um, whether it's industry, investors, but also um, research partners. So that's the benefits in a nutshell and uh, what it feels like to, to participate in the program in Munich. Um, I think uh, Linda is the best person to talk to about this one. Exactly. Thanks so much, Christoph. Um, now handing over to Linda. And uh, Linda, you're a venture consultant at Expreneurs Unternehmertum here in Munich. And um, you'll tell us a bit more about um, the Expreneurs Incubator, about Unternehmertum, the Technical University of Munich, and then, of course, your role at the EIT Fair Hub Munich. So over to you. Yes, thank you, Agnes. And also thank you, Christoph, for providing this great overview. I'm Linda. I'm, as Agnes said, a venture consultant at Unternehmertum and in particular in their Expreneurs department. And I will be managing the actual EIT fund program in the Munich Hub. And as they already told you, um, so EIT Food has so many partners and each of the hubs is organized by one of the partners. And here in Munich, it's the Technical University in combination with the Entrepreneurship Center Unternehmertum. And besides all the great benefits that um, Christoph already mentioned, like the network of investors, corporate partners by EIT Food, you will also benefit from the network of Unternehmertum and TUM. So TUM is the technical university here. Um, yeah, our amazing network of mentors, investors, and also experts will really help you to set yeah, the foundation and meeting the right people in the right time. So it's uh, getting yeah, even better. And you can also um, benefit from the network and facilities of the technical university. They have uh, their prototyping facilities at the Venture Lab in Weinstefan with uh, food processing equipment, laboratories, and so on. So you can really make use of their network as well and also their talents in the university especially within life science, nutrition, ag tech, food tech, yeah, these areas especially. And Roman Werner, he is also in, um, in the call here. Um, he is the managing director of the Venture Lab uh, Food Agro Biotech at TUM, and he's very well connected in this area. And you have the chance to meet him and Christoph Alessandri in, uh, yeah, in the, on the table, on the um, networking platform later. Uh, you can ask two specific questions. And Christoph, he uh, coached agri-food teams in the previous batch and he's a startup consultant from TUM. So yeah, uh, what can you expect if you really join our EIT fan program in Munich? So one of the uh, yeah great benefit is that the 10 teams can really uh, get uh, involved in our network, get uh, a working space here in the brand new Munich Urban Co-Lab in the 
city of Munich. So you can see that on the slide here um, from the outside and also the team of experts inside. So it's a, it's a great open space where you meet other founders and can go to events, participate in a really a vibrant environment. And this is, um, yeah, perfect to, um, yes, yeah, size the chance to have the possibilities to book meeting rooms with maybe potential investors, who knows, uh, use their maker space that we have here as well to also prototype and many other facilities and benefits. And of course, we can meet for different events here because networking plays a really big role. And the program starts with an offsite usually, if it's going to be possible. Um, we are usually going for a hike in the mountains here close to Munich. And this is where you can really get to know each other and connect. And as Alexander said, um, yeah, meeting in person has a, has, is really meaningful and especially in the beginning helps to really get into the program. You will also have a lead coach during the program that is looking after you uh, and your goals and who is also yeah, customizing the program for your needs, making introductions, connections, all of that. And you will also have a mentor, or we say companion, um, on your side. And they are usually experts in your field. So we have um, a matchmaking here with companions and startups as well to really find the perfect fit for you. And there are also many other experts um, that you can meet and uh, talk to yeah, uh, occasionally when it's needed. Um, yeah, they are very specific experts in certain areas. And all in all, we have also a great VC network here. We ha also have the UVC, the Unternehmertum uh, Venture Capital Fund, and also connection to uh, food uh, sector speci specific VCs. Also, uh, yeah, corporate partners are in, are in our network, but uh, of course, EIT Food has already uh, many connections here. And we are also planning to have an investor event where you actually meet and connect with, with investors, getting to know them, first touch points, maybe also getting feedback. What can you improve if, when you're then ready to um, do a VC round, all of that and we have plenty of workshops and one-on-ones, especially with experts. And for example, you will get insights for, from, for product market fit, um, how to secure the first investments, how to develop a team or how to handle legal or tech support. And yeah, this is the first time that uh, we are hosting the EIT fan uh, program here. And there are great alumni as well. So you can also benefit from their insights, their challenges. You can talk to, let's say, Air Up, Vit Vital, Delicious Data, and of course, uh, Ecolive. Darina is here today, and you can really learn from them. Yeah, another important asp um, aspect from our program are the community events. So we did some meetups. Last year, we did also a virtual breakfast, a feedback sessions, and so on. So it, I think it's really the combination of virtual events, but also then meeting in person that is making this program a really good one. And yeah, all in all, I can only say it's a really a cool program. So uh, don't miss out on this opportunity and you should definitely apply. But the best way to hear how the benefits uh, are really or um, how you can really benefit is listening to uh, our alumna from the last batch. So uh, Darina from Ecolive um, joined, or we invited her to join today. Darina, are you here already? <laughs> yes. Yes. Hi. Cool. I can't see you, but hello. <laughs> um, so, would you like to introduce yourself and Ecolive uh, very briefly? Sure. Thank you very much, Linda. So, my name is Darina Stiriakova. Mm, I am biotechnologist and geologist and CEO of Ecolife and Ecolife Germany GmbH. And what we do, we use bacteria for cleaning minerals, uh, soil or different waste 
and producing super strong and fully natural biofertilizers, biostimulants, and biopesticides, which can double or even triple farmers' production without agrochemicals. Wow. Thank you for uh, this introduction. And similar to what Agnes asked before for Seedbed, um, why did you join the EIT FAN program in the Munich Hub? Actually, because most of our bioleaching operations are in Germany and uh, we are producing uh, this biofertilizer somehow by accident. Uh, so we were looking for the right support and who else could have helped us uh, to enter agricultural market? Um, through Munich Hub, we have gained access to a huge network and valuable expertise. And so uh, imagine <laughs> with this support, we got on the market only in a few months. So it was a really good choice, <laughs> I have to admit. Cool. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, what would you say? How did you make use of the network here in the EIT food program, um, fan program? Okay, um, I think the mentoring we received was really intensive and we got a uh, really lot of valuable advices and navigation to the right direction because we were talking to the experts and to the industry. And also we even found customers um, and testing possibilities via IET Food Network. So if you want to be active in the food business, you really can't, can find better opportunity. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I can agree. And um, what were your highlights in the program, if you look back? Um, it was actually very nice to meet other startups with who you can really share your experiences or even cooperate, but also you can create friendship and have some fun. Uh, as you mentioned, especially nice was the hike to the mountains where we went all together. It was really nice. And there we could have intensive discussions and have a good food together. So I, I really enjoyed this especially, but uh, also Super helpful was very intensive mentoring and workshops where you could talk to the experts and discuss the startup issues and challenges, but also directly you could talk to the farmers and industrial partners uh, to understand market better. Um, so it had really, really big value for us, I have to say. Oh, that's good. Thank you. And so one last tip, if you have one tip to share for the startups who who will get in the program, what would that be? Um, that would be that uh, if you get there, you are really lucky. <laughs> so try to use this program as much as possible if you get there, because it's really amazing chance for your startup and program can offer really much. So don't miss nothing out of it. Uh, it's important to actively participate in all these helpful workshops and don't miss also chances for exchanging with other founders. This is really super helpful. And uh, also program can help you really much with promotion. So you can benefit and grow very quickly with such intensive support. So I would just say, use it. <laughs> and yeah, fingers crossed for all startups. <laughs> fingers crossed, yes, uh, perfectly. Thank you, Darina. Uh, great that you joined our session today. So Thank later you. you can find both of us um, at the round table or at the Q&A to ask questions. And you can also find Christoph Alessandri and Roman Werner there. Um, and you can also ask about TUM and Unternehmertum, our program and their roles and everything. So see you later. And I'm handing back to Agnes. Thanks very much, um, especially Linda. Thank you for taking over some um, moderation responsibilities. Um, always happy to, to to share these responsibilities. So it's, it's really nice to to have you as partners also, yeah, joining uh, this webinar so vividly. And uh, I think it really shows how yeah how important this this collaboration part is in in this whole um, the program and. Um, yeah, just um, really good insights, um, really cool insights. I see some messages uh, were popping up on my um, screen as well. So uh, in case I don't 
answer all of your questions. I hope we can just meet in the backstage session later at the networking tables. Um, and maybe we'll have some time in the end also to, to answer your questions. Um, yeah, we're almost almost at the end. Um, but last but not least, we have one last um, program for you. And it's, it's a bit of a secret since I think um, Rising Food Stars is this, uh, the most mysterious um, program <laughs> of all of it, since it's not a typical incubator, it's not a typical accelerator, but it's something a bit more um, individual um, and it's, it's, it's not really a program. So um, I'm super excited to hear um, from you, Najis, our brand new Rising Food Stars manager, um, what high-tech scale-ups in food and ag tech can expect um, this year at, uh, when applying to, to Rising Food Stars. I have to share my slides once again, so give me a couple of seconds, but we're almost there. Najis, I think you're here yes. already. Hi. Good to have you here. Uh, maybe in the meantime, Thank you can you. just introduce yourself. Quickly. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Agnes, for uh, the great introduction. Um, I am Najis. I'm the new Rising Food Stars, actually, not that new anymore. I've um, been here for almost three months. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think, Agnes, you, you say that the right way. It's a bit of a different. Um, kind of uh, approach that we have here for Rising Food Stars because um, the difference versus the two other programs is that Rising Food Stars is an association and um, as in uh, it has a legal status as an association and the idea behind it is that members can stay for up to three years so they can benefit from um, the network. And uh, the, the, the idea of the Rising Food Stars is to bring in early stage scale-ups that are looking to um, accelerate the commercialization of their uh, technology uh, or go uh, beyond their uh, in-home markets. Um, and we, we support them in this uh, growth and uh, expansion journey. And the members actually can stay uh, up to three years in the association. The first year is uh, waived, uh, the fees are waived so that they can uh, benefit actually and experiment, uh, experience the, the association um, and decide uh, from both sides if there is a good fit and, and they're getting all the benefits. But uh, historically, uh, we, we've seen that a lot of our members after um, the first year uh, decide to, to extend uh, and stay with us for more because they see the benefits from, from the, the, the network. Um, so maybe a, a quick explanation on who is the Rising Food Stars uh, for. And I think I, I saw some questions about uh, programs for uh, scale-ups. I think that's the right program for you if you are um, early scale-up, which has a solution, uh, technological solution in one of our uh, six folks areas that uh, uh, Agnes and Christoph presented uh, at the beginning of uh, this webinar. Um, we look for uh, scale-up that are um, started somehow to generate uh, revenue either through uh, a paying pilot uh, with the different uh, clients or uh, ideally that they have paying customers for the solution. This is to show that uh, the traction started and we want to help them on how to, to speed up uh, the, the commercialization part. So we're talking about revenues between a quarter to, to 10 million. I mean, 200K is, is also acceptable. So it's just to, to give a rough idea on what we're talking about. And also uh, these are scale-ups that have already a small team in place with certain roles. So at least five employees with distinct roles. Um, showing that the organization is, is growing uh, and, and ready to focus on, on other challenges that, on, that only uh, the, the innovation itself or, or uh, the product. Um, in terms of a fundraising stage, um, Rising Food Stars is for uh, companies that uh, already raised the Series A or expecting to raise it in the next 6 to 12 months so we can uh, support them also in, in this transition. And um, yeah, as, as I said, the, the main 
point is that uh, in terms of growth stage, we're looking for um, startups that are looking to to grow and expand and um, eventually go international, uh, meaning beyond their uh, in-home market so that they can get the full benefit from, uh, from the network. So that's about the uh, typical rising food stars we're uh, looking for. Um, in terms of uh, offering or, or value proposition, we uh, look at it from four pillars. Um, our first pillar, and I think uh, Agnes uh, introduced it uh, very nicely, which is about the personalized uh, scale-up support. So what should you expect when you join the Rising Food Stars? Um, you uh, get a chance uh, as part of your onboarding to have uh, what we call a scale-up scan to uh, help you and help us understand uh, the um, uh, basically the, the stage of scaling you are at and what are your gaps and opportunities and strength as well. So we can uh, build a specific plan based on that and, and work on it. And, and we look at different angles, be it uh, leadership, uh, potential strategy, organization, um, etc and and work on the on an action plan based on that you also uh get a pitching training uh demo days etc and following that uh comes then the tailored support in terms of introductions and, and um, needed uh network to to support your your specific uh, needs uh based on one-on-ones and, uh, and and group calls uh, the second part that we provide is um, exposure and visibility. And, and we really believe that at this stage of uh, the growth, this is an important part. We, we aim to raise the profile of, of your company, raise awareness about um, what uh, the, the great solutions that you are bringing on the table and the tangibility of it, because it started already showing uh, somehow some traction. So... This is something that we, we want to bring forward. And the way we do that is, uh, one, uh, by uh, supporting you to have um, spots in the main uh, EU exhibition and, and um, events such as uh, Future Food Tech or FNA Next. And we support you there with communication and financial support to be able to travel, have the right branding and, and communication. Um, up to 4,000 uh, euros per year. Um, but on top of that, I think there is an interesting part also, again, for, for a scale-up is, is the PR and, and uh, media and visibility you, you get through our own uh, media channels um, and, and the ability to use the brand Rising Food Stars as a, as a way to open doors for you. And I think we have plenty of uh, great examples from, from this year. For the sake of time, I'm, I'm not sharing, but uh, if you are interested, we can uh, speak in one one and share more examples on how we support some startups by um, through uh, videos that were aired in our channels, interviews, articles. And uh, these are things that really help them to, to get the right visibility uh, with investors, with potential strategic partners for some uh, rising food stars that uh, got eventually acquired and, and they were um, very grateful to have this kind of support, uh, professional support uh, that they wouldn't have by themselves because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's costly, it's uh, time consuming. So I think this is something that uh, is uh, very much valued. Uh, the third uh, pillar uh, and, and I think that's uh, interesting because it has uh, a, a different aspect versus the other program. So uh, first, by being um, a rising food stars, you can have um, access to uh, our innovation uh, project calls. And this is a way to accelerate your uh, R&D and, and technological solution with uh, big uh, budget support and uh, by building a consortium as well with a corporate and, and university and the outcome of this research as are really valuable for um, our rising food stars and help them to uh, speed up years of uh, probably individual work but the second part is also uh, something new we're experimenting this year is also to help them speed up the commercialization 
Um, and we have a program called the Fast Track Initiative where uh, they join forces with a corporate partner um, to bring in their uh, solution to the market. So, for example, uh, partnering up with a retailer so they can test and see the results of um, the solution uh, and start uh, and accelerate actually their revenue generation uh, through this support. And we, we finance them with up to 200K uh, with such initiatives. Um, the last piece, and, and uh, again, for this type of profiles that are trying to raise a series A or B, uh, we uh, do uh, personalized introductions to our uh, investors community. Uh, once we know that they are raising funds, um, I uh, represent them in meetings with investors, share their uh, stage, their needs, etc. And based on that, share back feedbacks and make uh, introductions uh, for them. And I think as uh, Christoph mentioned at a certain point by being a raising food star, there is also um, an opportunity to be part of our own uh, investment portfolio. And uh, to give you an idea, we have almost seven rising food stars today that are part of uh, EIT food uh, portfolio. So this is in a nutshell, the benefits uh, that you get from uh, joining Rising Food Stars. Um, happy to uh, also speak more in details about some of them uh, in the networking session. So maybe Agnes just move into the next slide. Um, so showing here, and I'll uh, put also in the link, the list of the current Rising Food Stars. So you get an idea also about the type of network that you get by uh, joining the association, uh, because the idea is also to connect you with other uh, startups and the stage at which they are. Um, they are across the six focus areas, uh, very, very successful ones. Uh, I think very great stories are coming out of this year. Uh, we have um, some nice exit. Uh, strategies by uh, two companies that were acquired by big players. Uh, we have some uh, that raised the uh, Series Bs um, that reached the uh, big milestone of 10 million euros or more than uh, 50, actually some reached 100 employees. So creating job impacting the, uh, the social economic uh, uh, environment as, uh, as we aim for at uh, EIT Food in general. So maybe just sharing one example. Unfortunately, we were supposed to have uh, a founder uh, with us uh, to share his stories, but uh, in this uh, crazy times, it's very hard to to plan. Unfortunately, he he just tested positive, so he couldn't be with us. Um, uh, it's an interesting story that uh, I really want to share, but I can uh, speak on behalf. So Philip is the. CEO of uh, Lovi, um, and uh, actually he was uh, a member of the Food Accelerator Network, I think in 2019, um, and afterwards became a member of the Rising Food Stars. Uh, they are in the targeted nutrition uh, currently, and, and they got recently uh, acquired. Uh, by by a big firm, um, they uh, play into uh, basically uh, personalized uh, nutrition uh, through doing uh, in home uh, blood tests that are shared back uh, with that are done at home, and then uh, based on that, the results are are shared with the consumer uh, and and help him to to personalize his uh, his nutrition. Uh, based on that. They are very pioneer in this area and, and they went for this uh, strategic partner uh, to, to speed up their um, uh, go-to-market, uh, especially to the US and uh, uh, other big markets. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame that Philip is not here, but uh, what he was telling me before is that he really believes that by being a rising food star, he was able first to understand what are his options if, if he want to grow further and uh, the type of PR um, and, and the growth that he was able to bring his company to definitely 
uh, helped him to to decide on this uh, strategic partnership that is a big step for for his company. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to share this on 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 his behalf. Uh, but uh, yeah, happy to speak uh, more about it uh, in, in the networking session, maybe. Thanks very much, Najis. Um, I think it was a really, really good overview. And I think it became much more clear about what the rising food stars are. And um, yeah, I really loved how you, you can share the story of Löwy, at least um, if Philip can't be here today. And I think it's a super successful one, especially because it shows um, how a team can evolve um, from really being a spin-off at the university to joining um, the accelerator and then actually um, yeah, scaling up internationally um, um, during the Rising Food Stars. And um, I think it's, it's a really yeah, impressive journey that they've done. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing more teams um, following their path. So it's, it's really amazing. And thanks to you as well um, to wrapping up um, the third um, program. And um, now it's, I think, up to me to, we have Swiss Decode here. I don't know. I think um, you wouldn't. Yeah, you can, you can skip it. I think it's, uh, yeah, it was just to share an example. Yeah, thanks, uh, Agnes, for the opportunity to, to speak about the program. And uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, are there any questions uh, to Najis? Um, is there anything you'd like to to know about um, rising food stars? Maybe some of the teams that are um, that are on the plate here in the different focus areas. Is there anything you'd like to to ask her now? It's time. Otherwise, um, I think it's slowly becoming time to to wrap up and to um, meet you all in the in the networking um, section on the networking tables. I think there's no questions right now, so I'm just gonna go on um, to wrap up and um, I think I think you've got a pretty good overview about what the different programs are all about um, it's it's about starting with validating the market potential it's then about uh, at CPED incubator then it's about um, pilot projects about acceleration um, of your road to market um, during the um, EIT fan and then it's about individualized support for your high-tech scale-up and um, I'd really like to encourage you to, to join, um, join us on your journey to transforming the food system. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to, yeah, to really uh, get access to an amazing network um, that's full of innovative um, corporates, startups and um, other investors, um, other entrepreneurs. And I think we've heard that, that the value is also in connecting with other entrepreneurs um, and it's, it's really a valuable, um, yeah, all the three different programs have really um, a lot of value to, to you in different stages. Um, yeah, so why to get involved? Um, sum it up. Um, as a startup, it's access to infrastructure, to labs, to technologies. It's access to pilot partners, to customers, to new markets. It's access to world-class skills training, to mentors and experts. I think we've heard that um, from, from Linda and also from, from Alexander, um, that they have an amazing network. They have um, entrepreneurs and residents in the programs that can really push your startup into, um, yeah, to the next level. Um, we have investors, um, Christoph mentioned Peak Bridge partners, um, other investors that are joining us as well um, in making an impact in the food system and commercializing um, your ideas. And, um, yeah, of course, you get get to be part of a thriving uh, European-wide food and ag tech community. And um, I really liked that you all um, shared a lot of your, your thoughts and you asked questions. I think that's that's what we're here for today. And um, as a corporate, of course, you get access to a high-quality pool of agri-food startups, which is um, super interesting at the moment um, for, for a lot of you right now. And I think we can share a lot of expertise in working with startups at the same time. Um, it's about finding solutions to your individual challenges, um, but then, of course, also finding solutions together um, for, for the not so individual, but really um, systemic um, challenges that we have in our food system. And um, 
last but not least, um, I think we mentioned it quite often now today, um, we have an amazing impact investor network and you'll be able to profit from that and become part um, of that network as, as an investor as well. So what's there to say? Thanks very much for joining us. Um, we uh, have some further program information webinars and um, I'm going to send you, I'm actually surprised, no one asked, I think this is the first webinar that we did and no one asked if we're going to share the slides. Um, we will share the slides actually after and um, we sent you a quick follow up and that's where we're also going to share um, the appointments for our online webinars where you will learn a bit more about your program application. So we have uh, different appointments where you can ask questions concerning your applications and um, this will take place in the next week and the week after. So you still have a little bit of time to apply to our program. You can already sign up, of course, on entrepreneurshipeitfood.eu. Um, you can express your interest and then further um, go on with your application. But we do have um, special webinars for that as well. And we'll share that information with you um, latest beginning of next week. Um, so you can drop into there as well. So yeah, um, on behalf of everyone here, I'd just like to thank you for joining us. I'd like to thank all of the partners, the amazing alumni who joined us today and, and shared their individual um, experience that they had. And um, now it's off to the networking tables. You'll meet um, Alexander and Pina at the seatbelt table. You'll meet um, Linda and other colleagues from TUM. Um, and Darina at um, the EIT fan table. You meet Najis at the um, Rising Food Stars table. I really like these emojis coming in. <laughs> you can keep them going. <laughs> it's amazing. And um, you can meet us uh, from the CLC Central team as well um, at the um, EIT Food and Business Creation Central table. And um, I think there's only eight chairs per table, so just join another one if you can't uh, make this one. And um, I'd really yeah, like to encourage you taking this, this time and then we'll close the tables around 5 p.m. So have a great day. Thanks so much and take care. Bye.